Here's a limiting belief you got to overcome in 2022, so therefore it doesn't disrupt your year. Somebody along the lines of this year, going forward, if not or they've done it already, is gonna sell you into lower standards. So I'm gonna sell you into lower standards. How many times have you, said, have you, heard, have you seen marketing ploys say, hey, you know what, if you take this pill, you lose 30 pounds. If you take this drug, your bench press will be, right? Somebody's try, always trying to sell you a what? A shortcut, a gimmick, a magic pill. If there's somebody gonna sell you something, and by the way, they're, gonna, it's so, they're so convincing too. You don't need to do this life insurance business to make $100,000, just buy this NFT. Buy, buy, buy this crypto, right? Buy this, buy that. Buy this piece of property. You, you don't have to talk to people, you have to network. You get behind Zoom, just be on your couch. I remember reading this book for the very first time, it's called The Four Hour Work Week. Have you ever heard that book? Tim Ferriss. Tim Ferriss, right? Great, great, great author, brilliant guy, mean head that has this practically a genius. I actually bought into it for a second. Four hour, that's awesome. You'll have to work four hours a week, but you're not gonna build a real business working only four hours a week. Now, can you make 100,000 a year? Sure. Can you make 200,000 dollars? Sure. And by the way, he was a minimalist. You know what a minimalist is? Don't own anything. Right, put everything in a suitcase. He'd say, you know, if you want to travel to Costa Rica, don't even bother with luggage. Just ship your suitcase over to, show, uh, to Costa Rica for the first time. Just leave it there. Stay, stay in one of those $200 a month apartments and live a life on the beach. He was a minimalist. Now, for some of you with families, like how to pull this up with kids. It was, it was, right? It's cool to be single, ready to mingle, but if you got kids and you got responsibilities, it's hard for you to have a four hour work week. You know, one of the things I, I, I told my son, I said, listen, kid, and we're telling with her, like, with her, uh, she and I tell with our kids, our definition of a good parent is not being around you all the time. Because sometimes people feel guilty. Why? Didn't grow up with a mom. Didn't grow up with a dad. I was raised by a single parent, and I feel so guilty not being around for my kids. And by the way, how many guys already feel that right now? Limiting belief. Limiting belief. Why? By the way, you felt that, so don't feel bad that you feel that way. Does it take real work to build a career? What about a business? Is that more? Yeah. Okay. Does it take time? Yeah. So, well, so when you when you left high school to go to college, did you want to stay in town or get out of state? Out. Right? Because <laughs> you wanted it to grow. Well, well, guess what? Eventually, over time, guess what? You your relationship with you and your kids, they want to they want to grow. You want to get out of mommy and daddy's shadow. What I can impart on my kids is a what? A work ethic. Complainers love hanging out with who? <laughs> Winners love hanging out with who? Oh, interesting. Non-performers love hanging out with who? Non-performers. Performers love hanging out with who? Performers. Capitalists like hanging out with who? Capitalists. Entitlement people like hanging out with who? You gotta figure out who you are. You gotta figure out who you are. I'm not trying to tell you who you are. Maybe we're shaping our identity a little bit here in this, in this environment, but you gotta figure out who you are. You know, my, my kids, uh, uh, they're older now. I have a 26-year-old and they're gonna be, tw they're 20. They're gonna be 21. And guess what they get nailed at all time growing up? Uh, well, how come you're uh, walking around, depending on us to drive you around? Your dad's a millionaire. We follow him on YouTube, we see who he is. We see him on Instagram, how come you guys don't have your own car? Your dad's a millionaire. What's wrong with him? Does your dad not love you? Your, da your dad cheap, right? Like, but, but what did I manage when they were in high school? Hey kids, listen, I could give a crap about how the, their kid, your friends and their parents think about me. We are in an, we're in a capitalistic, not entitlement type of household. We're a capitalist household, not, not depending on anybody. And if you want a nice car, your currency with me is grades. Your credit score with me is your attitude. If you don't have none of those, you get nothing. And that's why you have no car today. <laughs> I manage expectations up front. When Jordan was born, I said, kids, go downstairs. Why? I need to have a talk with you. What's up, puppy? Listen, you cannot get jealous and envious over your little brother Jordan because he's gonna have access to more iPads, technology, and sports programs than you ever had when you were his age. Why? Because your dad was gonna come up. But with that being said, you being older, you have a different credit score with me. You got a dad with pockets. If you have the right attitude and your right currency with me, you're expressing those things. I want to fund and finance your business idea. But if you think, well, I got a business idea, give me money. Nope, come to me with a business plan. Don't just expect money out of me just because I'm your dad. Come with me with a, come with me a plan, come with me a program. So guess what's gonna happen to you guys long term in this office? In this office, complainers are gonna talk to you. I, I remember uh, one of my, one of my uh, VPs, hey man, a complainer just reached out to me. 
wow. I said, bro, I'm not surprised that they reached out to you. I said, okay. <laughs> because you made yourself recruitable. Because you, are, you put out that you are a complainer. <laughs> right? So how, I ain't got a text message. Listen, if I'm going to recruit somebody, I want, if, I'm going to, if you guys are going to build a business and we had a relationship, and you think I had access, finances, and, and relationships to help you build your business, wouldn't you try recruiting me? If you guys are running for governor, you guys are running for mayor, would, would you want me in your corner? Yes. Would you want me to help you campaign? Yes. Did you want to help me fund your campaign? Yes. You want me to help you do fundraisers? Yes. So you call me, right? Yes. So how come when people complain, they don't end up calling me? But when people want to win, they call me. So who reaches out to you is also a reflection of you, exactly. So you gotta figure out what you are. By the way, a lot of these limiting beliefs, guess what? You know what it's a reflection of? You. Because it annoys you. Doesn't this, doesn't this shit annoy you? Because you're, you're starting to break through these limiting beliefs. Okay, now, last one. Here's a limiting belief. Everybody say, I. I. I need leadership. I need leadership. Some people think they don't. Some people think they got it. I got this. I got this. I mean, I mean, heard a few weeks ago, this uh, pro basketball player, eight years, coming to my office here. You saw him. He was at last fast start school. What did he boldly say in front of everybody? I'm going to be your number one guy. I'm going to break your record. I'm going to break your record. Well, where's he at? Not here. <laughs> Somebody probably sold him a... Limiting belief. He says, I'm a leader. I can, I'm better than Matt. I don't know. Maybe that's probably, right? Listen, as soon as I found Patrick, like, dog, this guy can take me places. I'm going to find a way to lock onto him, and I'm going to find a way for him to lock onto me. And I'm not going to lose that relationship. Listen, one thing that you should never let go of, if you find it, is a relationship with somebody that's in your corner, willing to challenge you, will increase your standards, raise your standards, and give you leadership. And sometimes leadership is not what we want, yet we say we want it. I want you to challenge me, are you sure? I want you to raise my standards, are you sure? I want you to make sure I make the most of my money I've ever made in my entire life, are you really sure? Because here's where you're at. You want to be up here. This here is called a stretch. I'm going to cause you to what? Stretch. And this here is uncomfortable. Are you sure you're ready to do the work? I remember looking Patrick in the eye, and uh, we're dropping off at the hotel, and uh, he'd open our broke Cadillac Escalade, <laughs> and he'd go open like this. Open the Patrick, and went, pa, pa. Pa, pa. And I'm trying to play it off like he didn't hear it. <laughs> Need more WD-40 you know, in Chicago. It's kind of rusty. I said PBD at that time. I said PBD. I'm 41, 42 years old. I took my entire 30s to repay the mistakes of my 20s. I should be a whole lot further along in my life. I've been through too, too many damn family court situations. I've been through too many damn custody issues. I've been through all that shit. I'm freaking debt, all that stuff. I should be enjoying now what I should have been enjoying in my 30s. But I screwed it all up. So with that being said, I'm 41, 42 years old now. Please, PBD, tell me what I need to know to learn, to grow, to raise my standards, because I want to make sure my wife constantly has a smile on her face, make sure my wife has any decisions she makes in her life, she doesn't worry about the finances, make sure my parents are taken care of. What do I need to know? He goes, are you sure? Because I'm not afraid to coach talent. PBD, I'm sure. And guess what I was asking at that time? I'm asking for leadership. I'm asking for leadership. 